Today, you're gonna to learn how to create this very cool effect right here. Look at that. Before we begin, this video sponsor is Linode and they make it easy and affordable to host your site, app, or service on whatever technology stack you use. Unlike entry-level hosting services, Linode is a step up to powerful, fast, fully configurable cloud computing. With server plans starting at just $5 plus no hidden fees or surprise outages, Linode offers a no-nonsense hosting at a price you can afford. So sign up now using the link below to get a $20 credit on your new Linode account. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of CourseCetro.com. So today we're gonna be checking out something called SVG filters and it is an immense topic. There's uh, over, there's close to 20 different SVG filters that you can use and you can uh, do a lot of different things to your images and other elements with SVG filters. Now we're only gonna take a look at two of them, which is turbulence and displacement map. Let's go ahead and check out that effect again. We're also gonna be using GSAP for the animations, which is the green sack animation platform. I, and if you've never touched that before, don't worry, just do a channel search. I've done several tutorials and a crash course on GSEP as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started, but first make sure to subscribe. All right, so something I've done here that's different, um, instead of starting the tutorial by just creating the index.html, as I always do, uh, it's so redundant. I decided just to get that boilerplate up and running so I don't have to waste a minute of my time and your time in doing so. And obviously, if you're watching this tutorial, this is more of an intermediate to advanced topic when it concerns front-end development. Uh, you should already understand the basic structure. So what happens, we have our index.html, linking to our main.css here, which is empty, and that's it. Uh, we have an images folder as well, one, two, three, whatever. Um, just use whatever images you wish for this effect. Okay, so what we'll do first is start with the HTML markup, all right? So uh, just be to, I don't know, I'm a designer. I like to make things look interesting. This has nothing to do with the purpose of the tutorial. Some beautiful art or something. How cool is this? Okay, uh, next up, this is the important stuff. We're gonna have our uh, SVG information. Now the SVG itself, oh, there's no Emmet uh, abbreviations for that. You can't even, okay, well, whatever. So our SVG, we don't have to specify a view box because we're only using it as a container for our filter. All right, so the filter is its own tag and we're going to call filter and then inside the filter is where we have all of our various filters essentially. Um, so the filters, there's about 17 different filters that you can use with SVG and there's a ton that you can do with them. They can be used in conjunction with one another to create a, a million different effects. Uh, an entire course could be made just on filters, um, probably multiple courses. So it's a massive topic. We're only gonna touch on two here, which is turbulence and a displacement map. All right, so the idea is, is we define our filters within this filter tag right here, and then we pass it on to an image of some sort. Uh, it doesn't have to be an image, but in our case, it's going to be an image. Um, so what we'll do is uh, first, we're going to use, um, and all the, ter all the names are start off, they're prepended with FE, as in filter effect. So FE, turbulence. All right, so it has a few attributes that you can use. Base frequency, we're gonna have this start off at like 0 0.02 and 0 0.03. Um, these are two different values that affect uh, the appearance of the photograph. And the best way I can describe it is just, just get in there and experiment with these values once we have everything all situated. But for now, we're just gonna leave it there. Um, we're also going to have uh, result equals noise. So when it comes to these filters, I, many of them you can say, okay, we're gonna name the result of you know this processed uh, image or whatever we're passing through, we're, we're going to call it result, or noise rather in this case, and then we can reference it in another filter as noise. So you'll see how that works in a second. Um, we'll have also num oct octaves, octaves, I'm not even sure how you pronounce that. 
uh, we'll have one. Again, this is another value they experiment. They can really change. You know, the higher the degree, the higher the number, the, the crazier the uh, the effect is. Uh, and then ID, we're going to call this Turbulence, and we'll reference that in JavaScript. All right. Um, for now, let's just go ahead and leave it at that. Um, and then, because I just want to show you what happens when we use um, just the turbulence alone on an image. Um, it, it looks crazy. Um, but I think what we'll do also, I uh, yeah, I think we're good for now. We're going to, after that, have a container for our images. So uh, first, let's go ahead and rename that to overlay because I'm going to take this whole thing and I uh, make it position absolute to sit on top of our text. And then I want a container so that we can use the grid property on our images. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste, copy and paste the images. I'm trying to make my tutorials a little bit faster these days. I uh, and that's good. So we have alt trees, guitar and clip. This is what these things are. And then I uh, class pick. I don't think I actually use that. I don't think I do. Um, so we could probably omit that anyway. That's all we're going to be doing for the HTML. So let's go to our CSS real quick. Um, I'm going to use a, a real nice serif font from Google Fonts, Playfair Display. And body, just some basic stuff here, setting the margins to zero, height, 100, port, 100 view port heights, position relative. Come on, Gary, talk. Font family is going to be play fair display. All right. Next up after that, um, I'm going to go ahead and just breeze through the rest of these selectors because they're not pertinent. Like the H1, you're not here for the H1. You don't care about the H1 in your life, right? Uh, SVG, though, will do position absolute. We have our overlay. That as well as position absolute top zero. Uh, we have our container, and the container is just a grid. So display grid. We have repeat three here on grid tab and columns for our three graph, our three um, pictures. You know, nothing exciting happened here. And then the real important thing, which is pertinent to the purpose of this tutorial, is our image tag. We want to give it a width real quickly of 100% height i uh, i don't think we have to do the height sorry our filter has to be defined by giving this an id right here so noise all right now i had a few other uh attributes in my and when i set this project up i'm not exactly sure if uh, these are pertinent i should test that but we're going to put them in, the, in there anyhow so what we do is you know it at this point, if I were to save this without having this filter, we would see just the three images in and of itself. So in fact, let's go ahead and open this with Live Server. Live Server is an extension. You can get that. As you can see, nothing great's happening here in terms of cool image effects. What we want to do is give this a filter and, and referenced using the URL function. And then we put the ID of, what did I call that? Noise. Okay noise now we save it and look at that now that's because we only have turbulence so this turbulence right here we want to use as a displacement map all right so what that will do is you'll be able to see the image but it's going to be distorted based on this uh, turbulence effect that we have applied here so let's go back and add that oops get rid of that there we go all right, so the next one is FE, displacement map. All right, so in is an attribute where we can specify the source graphic. So the source graphic in this case is gonna be any of the image elements that have filter URL noise. And then in two will be this right here. So it's kind of compositing the source graphic with FE turbulence right here because we said the result is noise and into is going to be noise as well. And then the scale, this is another um, attribute that you can play around with to see what it does. We're setting it to 20 here. So now if we save this, look at that. So it gives you a kind of interesting 
uh, I, I would say, kind of stylistic effect to any graphics uh, that you have uh, applied to it with that filter property. All right, so basically now what we can do is with JavaScript, we can animate these different properties to uh, maybe only have it animate in um, when it looks crazy like this and then go, go to zero so it looks like a normal identifiable picture. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So first we're gonna use uh, GSAP, which is the GreenSock animation platform. I've done several tutorials and a small crash course on it. So if you never heard of what that is, go ahead and check that out on my channel. Um, we're gonna do a script source. We're just gonna link to a CDN of tweenmax.min.js right here. And then we'll just do some JavaScript down here. All right, so what we'll do now is we want to get our element, our, our turbulence ID, which is right here. This is the one that we're going to animate, all right, for the values. By the way, just to show you, if we set these to zero, obviously it affects nothing. Going back, if, if we want to really make uh, things crazier, we can up these values like to three and seven. And now there's just a lot more ripples and such occurring in here. Uh, scale 20, try 50 here. So as you can see, I, you can play around with these values and you can also animate them as you're gonna see shortly. So we're gonna say let L as an element equals uh, document dot get element by ID. And that's going to be turbulence. All right, again, that's in reference to this ID right here. Um, after that, we're going to say, we're gonna say timeline is new timeline max. We're gonna pass in pause to true. So it's not gonna start when the document loads. So now we can reference timeline from, and we're gonna start off with our H1 element. So in the first parameter for timeline, uh, for the GSAP timeline is like the selector, what you wanna animate essentially. Next is going to be the duration. And then we have an object here about what exactly properties, you know, what properties we want to animate. This, I think we'll say we're going to go from a 0% opacity, so it's going to hide it initially. Um, and then we'll say Y 50. All right, so if we just come down here and say TL.play, we're going to add more here in between. We can see what this does. We can see it just slowly moves up. Not very exciting. Okay, so uh, next what we'll do is tl.stagger from, and we're gonna say pick, all right? So we are using that. So stagger from or stagger, there's also a stagger to, there's also um, a to method instead of from. It all depends on how you wanna animate things. Stagger will take multiple elements with the class name, the same class name, and I uh, apply the same animation to them in a staggered form, uh, in a sequential idea. So uh, we're just gonna take these pictures and we're gonna animate them in uh, from the top left, kind of. So it'll be three seconds again. Opacity will be zero. X will be negative 100. Y will be negative 120. I don't know why I chose 120 instead of 100, whatever. We'll give it a custom ease of power four ease out. Uh, you could check all the easing. There's a cool little diagram they have at GSAP or GreenSock. Just type in GSAP easing and you'll find it's like the first link. Uh, and it shows you demonstrations of all the di different easing types they have. Uh, and then we're gonna put here for a delay of 0 0.6 seconds in the, the, uh, the third op optional, no, fourth optional uh, parameter. So let's just save that and see what happens. So of course the turbulence and all that isn't animating simply because we haven't added that yet. So we can also animate the attributes because we want to animate this attribute right here using timeline max. So next is just to say TL2 and we're going to say L. And again, element is defined right here, turbulence. So that's what we want to animate, the SVG turbulence. And we want to say, uh, this will be three duration we can pass in in the object here, attr for attribute, and then another object inside of here. And then so you can animate the individual uh, attributes 
that are numerical at least, like base frequency right here. So we're gonna say zero and then zero. All right, because remember we're starting out with it already having turbulence and we want to, that turbulence to go away when it comes in. All right, so um, also over here at the end, we're gonna have a delay of three there. The reason do, we're doing this is because I, when we go from TL from, I, this would automatically play right away. And so you have to, when you're using GreenSap and you're, you're starting to learn this, you're probably gonna experiment a lot trying to get the animation timed right in terms of setting up your delays right here uh, and these other values. Um, so this is what I came up with that tend to work. You can also put negative delays, by the way, as well. So let's just save that. And there we go. Very, very, very cool stuff. We'll, we'll look at it one more time. Awesome, awesome stuff. So uh, there's a lot more you can do this uh, with this. I've seen other people. Uh, I'll try to remember to link in the YouTube description some other examples um, of this turbulence effect being used in different ways. Um, there's some really cool examples out there, like for instance, when you're moving your mouse around, the, an the turbulence will animate with an image that's following the mouse and other cool stuff like that. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that and you learned something new. If you have other resources to check out SVG filters or even something you've done, make sure to share it in the comments and also make sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys real soon. Goodbye.